Uh, so my name is Betty Finkelstein and uh, I'm the global brand manager at Danziger. Uh, Danziger is a family uh, breeder company for the past uh, 60, 68 years already. Uh, you're most probably familiar with uh, our wonderful products uh, such as Excellent, Gypsophila, Million Stars, Scoop Scabiosa, Green Dragon Lipidium, Painful Crispedia, uh, and many, many others. Uh, today, I have the pleasure uh, of having my best friend, Alison Bradley, with us and the legendary Gregor Lesch, uh, that despite the situation in Europe, uh, have decided that the, the show must go on. Uh, and he, he has a, agreed to be our host, uh, not our host, our guest uh, today, together with Alison. Uh, the topic uh, today will be evolution in floristry after COVID. And as Alison mentioned, after uh, they will have their uh, short, in short introduction, uh, we will open the microphone for everyone and you will be able to uh, comment, ask question, talk. You can also uh, ask question on chat on the left if you, if you find it uh, more convenient for you. And we will follow and make, a sure, uh, make sure that we're answering everything. Uh, I would like to remind you, because we have many, many new uh, people here today with us, that we have a Facebook page dedicated to you guys uh, under the name Danziger Live. Uh, this is an interactive uh, uh, group for florists uh, managed by Alison and by Danziger, uh, where you can share your creations, uh, you, get, you can get inspired by others, you can ask questions, get remarks about your work, uh, and this is your platform to interact, uh, to hear, to listen, and to be heard. And we invite you all to take advantage of that. Uh, and before I move on to Alison, I just want to remind everyone and invite everyone. Uh, we have a new competition in, in Fusion magazine with Alison, uh, with uh, our Green Dragon. And we are inviting you all to take part in it. Uh, it's under the theme uh, energize your wellness, uh, and all the information is available uh, on on Fusion Magazine Facebook page. So you are most uh, invited to go and take a look. And if you have any wonderful ideas to share with us, uh, we would be more than happy to see your creations. And uh, that's it for now. So uh, Alison, back to you. Okay, uh, Gregor Lersh. Actually, I'm not going to try to introduce Gregor. Um, Gregor hinted earlier that we've been friends for quite a long time now. Boys! I'm not sure where that noise came from, but that was quite exciting. We've been friends for many, many years. And, um, and I was horrified to watch what was happening in Europe. Um, some of you hopefully have seen how devastating it was. Um, Gregor lives in the town of Bad Neuner in Germany. And I have to say, it's, it's basically almost beyond repair, if you look at it. So we'll deal with that a little bit to begin with. But can everyone please do me a favor? Once we've covered this subject, um, you can see he's fine. Um, Gregor, welcome. How are, welcome the, fam how are the family? Yeah, the family is fine and uh, we are back to uh, start to, to work on the regular things because of the cleanup is uh, the first cleanup is done and now we are waiting for the first shot that people say we can start to rebuild and so this uh, will take a long time because of here are uh, we have a, a loss of people of 170 only in the northern uh, region here of the R River, which is a very dangerous, quick river. That's what we better know since last week. And uh, but the life is going on, and this is was my first reaction on this. What physically is all damaged here, and also uh, the all the pain and all that what people feel for the loss of their people and their uh, their dearest and everything. But I believe. We also have to look ahead. I'm not a typical economy man. You may can see that actually, but I really think that uh, the, the life has to go on and that we uh, have to think, even if other things at the moment seem to be more important 
to jump up again in, in our daily economical life, but that also our profession, where are hundred thousands, the green professions, that's what I always say, um, have also to live on. So what does it help when we praise other, uh, other branches, other um, professions, and forget that our people have to really also make it, to make it. And I am very convinced of, and this is for me the focus that we are a big, uh, I don't say family, this is too sweet, that we are a big strong bound, which is horticulture, uh, the flower production, flower distribution, flower marketing, and then comes the other side, flower, the florists, flower distribution in, 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 in terms to the consumer, and then also uh, the big decoration business, which is harmed like hell since last year. And then we have all these, and I cannot say this is a profession, but for some people they do it like that, are all the flower arrangers and the people who use their flowers for their personal culture. And so that these are for me the, the green professions and I see them all in one boat. And we cannot say, don't forget the florists or don't forget the gardeners. I think it should go all together. So that is what I have to, do, to say about this. Okay. But um, people who know, who know you, or some people know what your, your history, your background is, but I, I know well enough that you really started as a plantsman. Is that, you know? Yes, I, I started uh, when I was uh, after school. I started actually as a horticultural uh, student. I had the three year gardener contract in a, in a, a place around here. And uh, it was actually, and this was my lucky situation. My grandfather was still alive, which he was a super plant man and a florist also. So, and he was the closest to me because my parents, they were like many flower people always uh, working on their mother's days and daily flowers and grave decorations, grave planting, bedding planting, taking care for the hotels here around. So I also had till about seven, eight years ago, I was on my knees once in the year in the May period uh, and to make the bedding plant, uh, the bedding plants in some hotels here in town. For this, I came home from all my work on uh, stages, studios, classrooms all over the world. But then I hear the song down on my knees. So I know what bedding plants are till today. But uh, we should not praise what we are doing. I think, Alison, go on. I don't want to go too deep in all that where I'm coming from. But I'm a gardener and florist in the fifth generation. Yeah. But I still, I don't lean back uh, to this. I really want to say, we have to look to the future. We have to look straight on to uh, what is coming and not only what is behind us. It doesn't help us so much. But you've never been the kind of person in all of my knowledge of you to stand still particularly long. I mean, you have, you know, when somebody says to me, Gregor Lersch is a florist. Well, yes, you are a florist. There's no question about that. Or then someone else will say, Gregor Lersch is a teacher or he's a lecturer. But actually, you're one of these people who, who diversifies all the time. Even when you had the shop, you, you were diversifying and changing your style as well. So you, you've never been a man to stand still. So yeah, it is nice that you say that. And I feel sometimes the draft that I have to change something, but I should not uh, just say, yeah, this is like that. No, no. <laughs> I say uh, it, it has to do with I have that uh, feeling when I have said something and done something. And when I would repeat it, then I would feel bored and I would say, hell, I cannot say it again. And then I really try desperately to find another thought or another, I don't say idea, but another thought or another direction to sing. And that can really, it doesn't sit in my brain then uh, that I say, oh, come on, uh, I have to reserve this for the next time so that I 
I don't want to share it now, I do it later. I think this is always very difficult. You yeah. should not hold too much what you found once, which was good what you did. So look ahead to that, what can be done next. And then it is fresh. Uh, but this is personal. I think, uh, what can we say what uh, our gardener and florist friends helps next? And it, it, it is not only COVID. I see actually that the whole emotional uh, side of flowers could change at the moment very much because of I am very afraid that the people who want for a good reason, want to save the world, that they say, hey, do we really need now so much about flowers? We should be very clever and very discreet with our drafting and, um, and driving and going on that it doesn't sound, it's us make space. I don't think that is something what I feel very, very important. The discretion of our professions to still exist and look to the oh, future. Your but part, I'm hearing lots of interference and I don't know where it's coming from. So my apologies. But um, what, I would, what I would say is that um, one thing that came across from the outset with COVID was that the people in terms of flourishing where they were in countries where they had an existing social media platform, where they had a good strong website where people or, yeah. or where they had a minute to where their business could be when the shops were actually closed as such. Can I just say whoever is coming on here the shop, I think it's in Danziger. Can somebody in Danziger switch the dance? Did you? Okay. Oh my goodness. Like this, I need a gin in this, darling, and it's only No, me. don't do it, Alison. Don't. <laughs> okay. Hey. Thank you. Um, so what I'm thinking is in days gone by when you were a florist, and I had a shop briefly, as you know, that you were the florist, okay? But nowadays you have to be more entrepreneurial, if anything. You write about diversification, but also the shouting thing. When you're getting campaigns where people are saying, you know, other organizations are taking on the, uh, the situation. So a bank saying you don't need to buy flowers, do such and such. An insurance company saying, do, 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 chocolates, buy chocolates, don't buy flowers. There seems to be, a, it's almost as if the floral industry is being picked on to a certain extent. And I think you're quite right. We do need to say to people, okay, but not, we have to be very careful about how we take it forward. I, I think uh, when I see after uh, the COVID phase and now this what happens last week here, sorry that I mentioned it again, okay. that, uh, such a, a, a tight um, row of events, how they are going now, it must actually have a strong effect on the next generations and also on people. So I think I am deeply convinced of that flowers are very important because of, they are the machinery oil in the social motor, which is, uh, is with us. So I think the, the flowers are one of the very soft ways to say something. It is not always a word. We believe today so much in words, in written words and in spoken words. But I think that the flowers and the, the blossoms and the green, that they can be accompanying messages to everything what is said and written. So that is what I believe. But we should be careful to be not too much forward. It's, it's interesting because when COVID and all the chaos that erupted at that time and where no one was sure what could be done and we're not getting into politics, we've agreed that already, um, but different countries reacted in different ways. Um, Germany reacted one way, the UK reacted in a different way. But interestingly enough, 
the florists in the Netherlands were flooded with requests for flowers. They've never had such a good year in their life before. They're absolutely, the people turned to flowers and they droves. And it was, it was fascinating to watch that. And if that happened in one country, surely that should percolate through the rest of the world. But it proves actually what I said. It runs by itself because of the need for the emotional effect of flowers. What flowers do is going very much by itself. So pushing it too loud is not necessary. I see also that uh, harm, very hardly harmed is the industry of industry of the wedding and event, uh, event business. Yeah. And I think that uh, also that's what, they, what I heard in Southern France recently, they said that the French florists, they had never beside the event and wedding floristry, such a good year. Mm. And plus some support from the country. So there is uh, a lot of positive things about the say that flowers still have that magic uh, implanted, <laughs> terrible word, marketing in their being. Yeah. that they are highly emotional and that they can do a lot for themselves without being too much pushed from us. And I know what I'm talking about. I have done a lot of years for the German marketing company uh, of uh, the horticultural um, um, scene. So I was in marketing for flowers and this is wonderful to see that we don't need to push it, that even in the COVID times, people were buying flowers for their soul and they did not only buy it uh, for representation because of representation was really not an issue in the last year when I think that I was here in my garden for a year you know what I'm talking about it's absolutely true because as far as I can see but particularly you and I are lucky you have the garden we have a garden we have we have about an acre, you know? We're, we're fortunate, we could go outside and be in nature, but we are relatively unusual. You know, there's certain countries where people are trapped in a flat, they're trapped in their houses, they can't get outside. So bringing flowers and plants into their home brings nature and energy back into the situation. It's a can we say, uh, Alison, can we say that this phase is a renaissance for a good old feeling that people said you need flowers in your place yeah can we say that or I, is it i i don't see why we can't say that i think it's just a gentle statement like that is when when covid hit um and and all the chaos that went on and all the bad publicity that went down because people didn't understand the full situation. People are always judgmental based on very small amount of facts, but some of us knew the real facts. And that's when we produced the video, which was hope, which was florists going into their garden and cutting some flowers and saying, we've got hope, we've got flowers in our hand. It was a simple, simple statement, but it connected with so many people, you know? I think, you know, I saw you when we went to Singapore one time when you bailed me out when we needed a judge, yeah? And we went to uh, the gardens by the bay where we were judging. And then I said, there's a place you need to go, yeah? And you went in there and it was like looking at a child in a sweetie shop. You were so happy to be surrounded by plants. Mm, even more. Like people. <laughs> Even more like Aladdin in the Wonderland, <laughs> looking up, you know. So that was it, yeah. Was Sweetie good. Shop is just like this. <laughs> but then it was like this, you know. Blind, blind, blind. Yeah, Actually, unbelievable. We lost you at one point, which was nothing unusual. So anyway, I had said that we would try and keep our chat um, fairly brief because we've got so many people wanting to talk to you but can i just plead with you to stay off the subject of what's happened in bad neuner um in germany in belgium in the netherlands in london in oman and so on and so forth we'll stay off that because you can see he's fine okay 
Um, he's now got electricity, he's got water. So I think we could sort of open this up and I will stay on here and Gregor will stay on as long as we can to answer as many questions and to give as much help as we can because Danzinger have given us this platform to no benefit to them whatsoever. But this is them um, trying to support the network of the floral industry. Well, I was wondering about uh, the formation of consortiums going forward uh, with this sort of paradigm shift and what your opinion is about that consortiums like floral fundamentals and so forth. Um, I think uh, that's something that we may want to consider talking about briefly. Uh, a consortium, I would say the floral fundamentals is basically a communication platform. Um, and for the excellence of, uh, of flowers. Um, and it's, it was about breaking down barriers, Kristen. We, mm -hmm. um, what we find is um, growers live in their glass houses. I mean, some of them literally live in their glass houses. And florists, particularly these days, are isolated too. You know, they're in their shop and Yes, they might chat on social media, but they don't necessarily have the opportunity. And having lost the customer base from footfall coming into the shop, the isolation was even more um, evident. So I think there's some of the fundamentals ambassadors are actually alive here. But what's happened is this free flow of information. The question is, is everybody as altruistic as fundamentals? I doubt it. <laughs> but um, Gregor? I think uh, I observed from the first moment when you told, uh, spoke to me about floral fundamentals, I had uh, the strongest thought, what I had is that actually for the first time to me in a long period that uh, the production, the gardeners, the producers and the florists uh, would really sit in one boat. So I was very long time, um, I was in the, involved in the uh, IPM trade fair in Essen. And it was always a hassle. I can really prove it. It was a real hassle that the production side and the florist side, that they would never work so close together. So they were in one fair. Okay. But it was always uh, difficult amongst them. And when I heard, here are the producers, get highly appreciated from the people who want to use their product and give it ahead to the consumer. This was a sensational idea. And I know it will not end and it cannot end because of it is already too far. That's my opinion. I'm not Jesus, but <laughs> that's my opinion. <laughs> growing on a daily basis to the point where we um, are very restrictive about which growers can come in. For example, Danziger can't join because they're breeders. So it's got to be growers. So we have growers who grow, for example, Portanova, this is a huge grower, and then we have field growers. So it's, it's all encompassing, it's quite different. So, but it's growing, that's for sure. Any other questions, guys? Go. Okay. Canada thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Allison and Gregor, for being here today. We really appreciate this. Gregor, I just wanted to know uh, you are going to continue classes in the future in your garden? Uh, I know that I will, for the moment, do more the online, and this will be very much for this year. Mm -hmm. And I will also. Uh, I was already traveling this summer, and I had some Southern Europe classes and uh, for the the our old garden uh, which is not all old our hall here is a modern place mm -hmm. but um, I think we can think we can uh, start something like this again uh, at the end of next year or the end of next summer but I am not uh, I cannot predict how the health situation in the world will be yeah. as soon as we have a uh, 30 people, 25, 30 people together so that we can make a, a English talking class where people speak English, but we also can speak uh, in between, we can speak in other languages. So actually the resource where we can have people uh, coming from
can be very wide. So during the class, we uh, can hear in, in the garden is enough space. And so, so I would do that. Yes. I don't want to give it. No. Good, good to hear. I've, I have many friends who have taken classes in your garden. So I look forward to it in the future. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Lee. OK. Is that you, Maria Lane? It's Mar Maria Lane, come on. I'm you. Yes, I am you. Hi, Karen. Karen, yes. Hi. Hi. Um, thank you for having this class. It's really wonderful to hear these conversations. I'm coming to you from Arizona. And we um, have a little bit of gardening here, but totally not like what you have in Europe. <laughs> we have to import almost everything. And um, my question today is, I um, went to a studio-based florist model where I didn't have walk-in actually about six years ago. And now I'm feeling like as things open up here, I would like a little more um, visibility. And I'm curious if you have experience or anyone on here has experience with small micro um, where I could still have our studio pay lower square footage for all our um, storage and cooler and design space and all that, but have a small area wh which would give us visibility. Um, because I know people love to interact with flowers and people ask if they can come in and we do let them in, but we're not in a very convenient location. So I'm just curious if anybody has thoughts about that. I think um, the uh, very much of a hindering reason is the, the price of renting uh, something in a very interesting uh, urban situation. But how are you in an urban situation or are you in a rural situation? So it, we're in the Phoenix area, uh, Phoenix Metro. So it's kind of suburban. Um, we're not like, there are a few spots in Phoenix that are very urban <coughs> feeling, um, like in the urban European cities. Um, and most of the area is very car based, um, not so much. Uh, yeah, so more of a suburban feel um, and some kind of mixture. You have the chance to have access for cars. That, yeah. that cars can visit you. So uh, what I learned over the years, if you are in an urban situation that you don't need uh, a very big space, but that you need actually a picturesque space. So that uh, a space where uh, seeing it even if you don't see the product close up, uh, it becomes attractive. And this works in, uh, in over here very much. So, uh, and I also had this advice from years ago from uh, a trend researcher here in Germany, in Austria, Germany. And it was a good advice and it, uh, it works very well. Visibility uh, depends um, not only that they know you are there, it is that uh, you create uh, a corporate identity by <clears throat> your presentation, what you are showing. And this can be just a few bigger things, even like a special plant or like a structure with covered with plants or something, so that you really attract people for that first glimpse. And uh, it's very difficult for somebody from tight central Europe to speak for such an enormous situation in Arkansas because of you have a very hot and warm climate. So that is all more difficult. I would have, uh, if I have a little space uh, there, I would try to make an uh, entrance situation with a few bigger, interesting succulents and then um, mm. lifted succulent arrangements with long streaming down Zinichos and Lampranthus and uh, Seropegias and, and all that. And then having some characteristic plant arrangements there. If it fits to that, what you want to sell. Okay, if you have a, 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 an image of having very dear old uh, 
not old fashioned, but uh, traditionally dainty flowers with sweet peas and, and ranunculus and weeping roses. You cannot come up with such a succulent entrance. So but our, um, so my style is, uh, my, my main focus is flowers. We do a little bit with plants and I love them, but I love cut flowers. Um, I like your idea though, of maybe doing something plant-based to draw people and then um, having obviously the fresh arrangements. I do two, two styles distinctively. One is a more artistic, somewhat Asian inspired, but lots of empty airy space. And then uh, the lush garden that um, draws from some of the, the trending Pinterest things, but um, staying away from the traditional round mound mar mass market designs, um, yeah. really focusing on distinctive so design. Why, why you don't have three meter high posts of bamboo in a, in a field at the entrance, uh, this wide, four or five meters wide. And then you have uh, some interesting uh, birds of paradise planted in them. And also some uh, um, uh, um, Sansevieria cylindrica and some ground covering stones and also ground covering um, Haworthias succulent. I would really also respect the climate and all that. I would say, okay, cut flower. This is what you can express actually in your climate, not so easy outside. Yeah. So this must be the rest of your marketing, your written marketing and your, what you do on the web and uh, the, send, the handouts and send outs and all that. But I would really work on a stronger identity. That's that you really built a corporate identity, stronger as it is already. If you mix too much, you have not a strong message. That's what I believe. So thank you for your trust in asking. One of the most successful people who does that, that I know of, is a guy called Nikolai Bergman. He's based in Tokyo. Right. He has a relatively small, um, he's got a big premises, but more than 50% belongs to uh, food. Um, with a lot of impulse buys there. Upstairs he has a school, but he's a relatively small uh, floristry section. And outside, he all places I... planted designs and they're beautiful. So it's, a, it's about attracting attention and being prepared to be different, you know? That's the way forward. Um, thanks for your question. I hear that Debbie um, is wanting to come in next. Yeah, so I'm reading lists here. So Debbie, hi Laura, hi Pip, hi Debbie. Yeah. Hello, it's really probably following on a wee bit with what we've discussed about identity. And I felt very strongly before COVID that I wanted to make the shop a kind of soul space um, because we get a lot of people who express the fact that they feel better by being in the shop. Um, this was kind of maybe going to be opening up in the evening um, but obviously with COVID, and I'm not quite sure really how to manage that. Um, I'd be interested in your thoughts. Is that enough to go on? <laughs> I could go on forever. Uh, Alison, uh, I was not totally aware because of I was so attracted. You know, I am electrified oh, when like somebody it. speaks. And it is not about how good or how whatever it is uh, that somebody speaks very, very special. So I did not actually understand the essence of it. <laughs> the essence of it is I'm really keen to go over the positive energy and the healing energy of flowers and um, to take that forward. Yeah. Uh, get emotional. <laughs> no, no, we should all at the moment get emotional. It's, it was a hard year. <laughs> She's yeah. actually part of the weeping wall. You know, you could visit <laughs> dancing at any time, be there, fine. Um, Debbie is very passionate about, you can see that's her background. You can see how many plants, et cetera. It's a beautiful shop, Gregor, you would love it. Um, but she's very much into the healing properties and aromatherapy and all that kind of thing. So she, she's hoping that this is the way forward. I think it is, Debbie. 
my okay. yes oh no i'm with you so there was uh, two or three words i did not really understand but this is my fault so, so you are in northern england she's in scotland yeah scotland. so yeah so i'm used to it very much but not enough so i think that uh, the 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 health part of flowers beside the emotional uh, effect on souls uh, is an unbelievable uh, chance and especially nowadays it is much easier to um, not only promote this to give people awareness that it is out there so i would really uh, see a big future for this because of you know how it is that many people don't trust the pure high medicine some people they trust more the softer way and i would really see uh, beside the emotional effect of flowers and plants i would really uh, work on that do you have some outside area yes a little bit a little bit yeah that is often it can be very it can be very helpful and uh, so i would not uh, also here i would go with a certain consequence and not too much mixed all of this so i would get, have still one or two um headlines of product which would speak for you and then okay people when they are attracted then you come up with what you also want to uh to to uh, what you want to cope with yeah. so i think you need a strong landmark and this can be the aromatic plants or this can be the the com comestible in spanish uh, it, it, the either edible and the spices and the spices for health and all that and what could be a wonderful uh, thing is if you uh, give it beside your knowledge about it if you give it a good um, presentation so that when people come to you that you don't need to say, "Look, this is uh, uh, this is an, uh, a, a, a rosemary or an estragon or something uh, very helpful for 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 your throat or what." So that you also give it a presentation, because of when people start to discover this as an interesting and unique present for others, think of presentation. Okay, I'm a typical florist. I think of very much of presentation, but I think very consequently of uh, the possibility that you become definable what you are offering this is definable make a good presentation of yourself your shop and also of your product so if you are a florist don't trust too much what the product is make it even nicer okay exactly thank you hey, i have a question alison can you hear me Liat. Hi, Alison. Hi, Gregor. I'm actually Liat from Danziger, and we heard a lot of questions uh, in regards to direct sales from florists, from actually from growers to florists. We know that uh, COVID-19 made us all more technology-oriented people, and why not have a direct uh, sales from growers to florists, and how do you think that this will evolve now after or since COVID has already changed our lives? I'll let you answer it first, Gregor, and then- No, I'll... you, ladies first, ladies first. Okay, two sides then. Um, I work with a lot of growers, as you know, and some of them have set up direct sales to, to point. But that's not possible with every grower. You need the distributor to get it from point A to point B. Um, what happened in, I'll use the UK as a good example, but it's not unique to the UK. What happened was this huge increase in demand for plants when COVID struck. Um, and what happened was the people who were growing them, you know, the plants when in the UK for, uh, to go to um, garden centers, couldn't get their chain of supply to go to the garden centers because they were closed down because of the restrictions. So they started to sell direct to the public. 
And now they're refusing in great proportions to sell to florists because they can get a retail price going direct to the public. So a lot of florists have actually lost out on people selling direct. So there are people who are selling direct to the public and it has hurt quite a few florists. And I know there's some people here who will know about that. Um, I, I have strong reservations about whether they can guarantee to get the product there yeah. in good enough condition. And distribution is a huge problem, as is packaging and packing. Um, Gregor, over to you, kid. Uh, I think it is a very um, a fundamental point when you say that, um, for example, that the people are buying from the florist or they are buying from the, the, uh, the producer or another distributor. I think uh, you cannot actually channelize it. You cannot do it by law and you cannot do it by whatever decisions. I think it must be very clear when you buy from a florist that uh, the, the definition of what the florist is doing is very clear, that it has a certain quality and of work, of presentation, of everything, of service. And when the, the producers are starting to distribute themselves, then is it not mostly the pure product that you have a bunch of, or you have a pot of. And I think uh, at the end, you have a very uh, unprofessional market. All the, also all the, uh, the professional cultures, like the, uh, the cultures of the gardeners, the cultures of the florists, the professional cultures, the, the organizations and all that is falling all apart. I think it is a very risky process and uh, what can you do about it, I think, is to define what you are doing very clearly. If you want to sell pure uh, your product to uh, consumers or you want to do it uh, with the aesthetical filter of a designer or a florist. And that is what I always thought about it. And uh, we got lots of, uh, when we had the shop, my wife and me, for all these years, the old shop, now 160 years, you know, it is still existing there. And <clears throat> it had to do with sharpen the edge of your, uh, what you are doing. So by, you cannot stop this kind of going over and under when people are mixing too much their intentions to, to sell their flowers. When I see somebody is like what I heard in England, England that for example, some florists, they uh, speak about a, a gardener floristry, that they build a whole structure of cultivating themselves and also designing at their place. I think that can be a strong thing, but it doesn't help actually the people who suffer when next door, uh, a former big producer, grower, is selling everything um, in bunches and in simple pots. That's what I think about that. Amy has brought up a very valid point as well. Because florists are not needing vast quantities, they, you know, they, they, they buy in smaller amounts, Liat. When it comes to uh, yeah, exactly. before, they want to you know, sell mass, mass product. And it's okay to do that to a distributor because they can then distribute it through their various customers. But when it comes on a direct one-to-one -one sale, they lose out on that as well. So it's 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 quite tricky. You okay now? Is that good? Yeah, thank you. Laura, um, can you unmute yourself, darling? Laura Leon. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Gregor. Hello. Uh, my, que my question relates to floristry education and to floristry standards. So what do you consider the main areas of weakness are that educators should be focusing on in these times? And do you see any particular patterns or, or um, trends towards what these potentially could be globally? I, I think uh, we have by the worldwide 
<clears throat> distribution of uh, uh, floristry, flower, flower design floristry, that uh, we have a, a multi, no, a hyper nationalized trend. And this uh, is fortunately at the moment getting a little better. So that's some um, uh, cultural rooted floristry comes back to some educational systems. But uh, we, this trendy thing, and I know these years ago, I was especially in uh, Essen and in all this, I was very much involved in this to build it up. It was really good to kill the very stubborn tradition which always would year by year say, and now the red poinsettias, and now the yellow daffodils. And now we should really train and train very much of botany that we know, that people know what they are working with. And that builds also the foundation of that they uh, study classic and they study modern. So I think it is very, very dangerous to always show, look what she is doing, what he is doing. Look, this is the trend and you have to do it. If you are stuck in this after often three, four years, you know that you sit there and don't come ahead. Give people a kind of an education which makes them uh, a plant flower uh, design cultural specialist. And I think uh, that is a wide field and we cannot serve this in a few weeks. So uh, also I'm very much now in uh, some international master programs. I always said, I only start this when people have done your pre-courses, your 10 modules like in South America or like your uh, um, um, classes in Moscow or what Nicole School is doing there. So. It should be wide. We are not just some people who put nice flowers together and keep them in a paper. We have a very widely going profession. And it starts in down on my knees making a bed and it ends a bed, bedding plants, bed. You know, this pronunciation of this Germans. And then it goes up to a very artistic bridal bouquet. And we should be able to uh, lean over to a new trend when it's coming. And when somebody says, here is boho and here is new romance, that we are able to change. Very trendy ex education. No, thank you. Yeah. I say it. Absolutely, totally agree with yeah. that. You know, especially when people can slam things up on Instagram and suddenly they think they're whatever. If you look at the questions that come up time and again. Alison. Yes. Did I speak too long? No, you're no, we're still good. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. It's, it's not possible. I swear to goodness, some of these people are here for the next year quite happily. Um, <laughs> not me though. What you see is that people are asking questions on on social media, floristry pages, and the questions they're asking are beyond basic. They're like ABCs that they, they don't know and yet they think they're florists and they can set up in business and they have no clue how to even do a basic conditioning of plant material is genuinely shocking. Um, Carrie Marshall Foster, hiya Carrie, has a question for Gregor if she can come on. Uh oh, welcome, it's Miss Carrie. The Carolyn, yes, it's Carol. Carol, okay. Come in, Caroline. Unmute your doofus. Yes, she is. I did. I have, uh, I have unmuted. Unmuted. Mr. Lurch, a long time no see. <laughs> Are you receiving? We you see hear? you. We see you, Caroline. Um, in the face of what we've just talked about, i.e. the Insta florist or the, you know, I went to college for a week and suddenly I am a florist. How do you... Or what advice would you give to florists who are perhaps feeling threatened and thinking, is there any point going on? And can I really make a living out of this? What advice would you say? Would uh, you is, it, is it a florist, what you uh, speak about, which is a beginner? Or is it somebody on the way for a couple of years? 
no, 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 an established florist who, you know, all the people, so there are five and a half thousand florists in the UK and they are assailed by Insta picture this and TikTok that and they're busy creating very beautiful designs but threatened by overhead or people working from home or people who've been on a course for a few weeks and suddenly think yay hey, i'm a florist um what advice yes, would you uh, give i get them? you i get you i i think uh um in many countries which have or had a fairly intense and good education like Holland, Belgium, Germany, Austria, Switzerland. I, let me just speak from them now because of they are closer by. And uh, the, they had a good and, uh, education. And then after a couple of years, you didn't see them anymore in any kind of further on studying. I think uh, we should have, and I repeat that what I just said three minutes ago, we need a very wide, broad, uh, fundamental uh, education. And we need also this uh, popping up uh, from time to time uh, in places, in regions, uh, support for people where they can refresh. I found this always very good. And you see sometimes people 30 years on the road uh, in their shops and uh, not on the road in their shops and working they come once in a in a very innovative shop in, in an innovative uh, workshop or something and then they pop up again and you see that they have the qualities but it is not only for their quality i think it is very important for their self-esteem and for their um, self-confidence and they can do it, but they lost actually connection to what is really going on in, in the different scenes of the, the customers. But I stay saying, go for a wide education. Let people know what are these flowers. And I also stress this in the master exams I did in South America and in Moscow and everywhere. And uh, I said, study also the botany that they know what they are working with mm -hmm. you know if you put a interesting hanging cactus to a tulip then you should really say why these two are coming together the one is a tropical rainforest thing and the other one from the mountains of um, of the lebanon and or the, the um, um, um or the orient and then that could be the color, it could be the form, which brings this together. So there is so many dimensions to be a good professional. Some people say, oh, why I do need that? I just see what these masters, like you, Laura, uh, 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 Mrs. Slum, what you are doing. And I just do that too. And then I'm also a master. I think it is more fundamental. It is deeper. I spoke too long, sorry. Yeah. No, thank you so much. I think part of the problem, actually, Carrie and... Oh, Carolyn, sorry. <laughs> ...is the fact that um, florists are having difficulty getting staff, you know, because the, the staffing situation in a global situation is really bad, and they're finding it really hard to get people to come in and work, you know, in the shops. I found very much that what we should really um, <clears throat> do that we look um, amongst the more mature um, people, tw not 2015, you know, <laughs> they, 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 are going, mm. they, are, they are dreaming of uh, other careers, uh, working in an office and having computers or working in a, in a beauty ambience or what. But I think the people who had a, a very, were going a long way already in another life, I think they are so much seducible for that, what happens in a, in a flower place. But also this place should have a certain charisma. It cannot be only about selling a lot of flowers. It should really have a certain aesthetical or a level. And that is what we really have to study for, that we are able to do that, you know? It's, that, it's like when, 
Mehmet and I had a conversation, and as did you, that we were talking, I mean, the, the changing face of floristry, even in Germany for that matter, was that um, the strength was installations in hotels around you. You were, instead of installing flowers, you were in, installing plants, you know, for longevity and things like that. It's, it's being able to adapt that way. It's very much about... Um, we had, <clears throat> we had uh, here in town, 10,000 people, some hotels, some also bigger hotels, and we had uh, contracts with them every three months to do plant installations at different places in the hotel, which are important and public intents. And this was uh, five times a year, four times for the seasons, and then extra separate, it was the Christmas. And we couldn't do this with cut flowers. But uh, till COVID, our uh, successor did not lose this job till last year's in March. Uh, so I believe deeply in pot plants decorations, but the only thing you need is that you have a certain amount of props, even in a garage or in a rented uh, uh, less expensive place. But therefore, you need some props, what you have to build. And so, and even if uh, the education was really uh, well and fundamental, then you know, with a few iron bars and a few uh, covered uh, plastic basins covered with some natural, that you can bring flowers in the air. So the plants in the air that they last in, uh, in some. Uh, watering uh, uh, systems, like we had ceramics always, and it would last for three months. Sometimes we had to replant a little bit. And every job, every three months was 1,000 or 1,500 euros. So we started it when we still had the shop and our successor made it till last year. And this is the pot plant is very, very important too. Don't trust as a florist too much your ability to make out of a bouquet a piece of art. The pot plant is the companion of the people for a longer time. Mm -hmm. The cut flower is the message to yourself. Life is not that bad. And it is a message to someone. So that is the difference between pot plants and cut flowers. So for me, sorry, I'm not... <laughs> everyone but i see it that way no, we now welcome anna okay. yes so my question, my question was more how can we engage all these millenniums to keep either to build to be florist or to keep buying with the florist to keep attached to all this culture of flowers what would be your recommendation Yes, I can, you know, it doesn't take me a, a second to think about it. I already had your, the answer to you um, um, when you were uh, expressing it. I think uh, with a wide education that we do not train only the florist to uh, focus on uh, you florist will be in a shop, stand there for the rest of your days and making nice bouquets and little plant baskets. So that we should uh, more and more show how wide the field can be, what we can cover. There is, uh, I, I, I only to mention some people, there is the, 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 the florist on a, in, in a bigger gastronomic, gastronomical uh, unit or in the ownership or there is the chance to be an event designer for, and it will come back. People, especially in countries like uh, America and uh, Australia and in the countries where um, there is a lot of um, uh, event decorating by weddings and it will come back. It is one of the very important uh, um, boundaries in between these societies which were coming from somewhere else like America, 200 cultures in one country. And uh, that is one of the ways. So I don't know how it is in Germany. So if the little Pinterest vases with one little daffodil for a wedding decoration, it could be our destiny for the future in that, in that part. But uh, I see countries where it comes back. 
we should, and that is the right out to your, the answer to yours, we should really show what is all possible when you can design flowers. Some people, they even start from being a florist, that they are de indoor decorating people, that they help uh, on a, a freelance base also people to, uh, to, to, make, to, make, uh, to, to come up with a service for, for decorating not only plants and flowers, but I think we should show more diversity. The, the imagination and also people in the offices who give advices to, um, to people, the young people who ask, what can I do? They have no idea how wonderful, diverse the flower and the, the green professions can be. Also here I say, green professions and not only florists. Give them, the, give them the angle of, oh, I can also be in a nursery. I can be in a, a plant, um, planted uh, in a, uh, what is it? A landscaper. I can do this, this, this. Make the green professions together strong. Don't focus too much only on gardener or only on florist. Right. These education side by side. Some people, they study the hell till they are 35. And they studied all a bit of philosophy, a bit of marketing, a bit of teacher, a bit of that. And then they finally become uh, educated. Why should somebody who is in the green profession not have kind of uh, a basic two years for horticulture and then an for the floristry? This would make us more attractive. I just believe that, Anna. Anna, where are you? Colombia. Ah, sí. Podemos hablar español. Yo puedo decir todo en español a ti. Claro Para que mí sí. es más alegría como inglés, pero inglés es un poco más reducido, pero español es muy bonito. Y tiene muchas palabras. Sí, muy okay. bien. Now you've lost me, but um, Ana, to go back to your question about millennials, yeah? You might be interested to know that we have a growth pattern showing coming from the Netherlands because I get the printouts of a growth pattern in sales to the millennials. A huge growth pattern. But what's interesting is what kind of flowers they're choosing are different from the existing pattern. It's really interesting to look at. One of the biggest growth patterns is actually in chrysanthemum. Great. Yeah, it's a good sign. It's a very good sign. Okay, next we have another question from Kristen. Thank you, Anna. Muchas gracias. Hey, Kristen, unmute your wee thing. Thank you very much. I hear I, you. I think we have it, Ati here. Oh, it's Ati now. Okay, yeah. well, Kristen can come later. Ati, hello. Hello, thank, hello. thank you for an interesting conversation uh, and, like, and give us back the sanity. Because it's like it's really really hard for uh, for everybody in the, in this uh, florist business to uh, to fight with Instagram about those designs. Yeah. But uh, my question is, what do you think about uh, artificial intelligence taking over our jobs in, in the future? Is is there any uh, uh, chance that uh, we can fight with the computers? The computers. What shall they do? The the taken parts of our work? Yeah, at least some of the part because like I like I have friends who are designing the uh, the things here in Estonia, and it's actually pretty scary what uh, the robots can do soon. Okay, I have not heard of this. I cannot I cannot tell a lie. Have you heard of robots doing floristry, darling? Yes. Not not the floristry, but like the, uh, the, the how the robots can actually start to think by themselves so they can actually see the, the product uh, or flower or whatever, and uh, they can actually make it uh, so that uh, at least the robot has knowledge how to do it. It may not maybe have the, have the capability of, of like fingers yet, but uh, at least in the design wise, 
they may be soon uh, better than uh, us. Oh, I uh, doubt that. I doubt that that they are uh, able to, uh, because of I think what makes us what we are is culture, and so also the computers. If they are fantastic, and I believe you, they will be. They need our emotional and, and uh, cultural impulses. Because of this, the culture changes emotions and emotions changes culture. So I think uh, even if these computers are able to do a, a lot with us and for us, I would prefer with us <laughs> and not in front of us and we are just have to stand there and do it. Um, I. I'm actually not too good in all that, you know? I'm happy when I can do my, my, my laptop and my iPhone and all that, but uh, I find it personally very interesting what kind of forms and what kind of colors and combinations are these new individuals able to show us? I, I, I'm not so much scared, but you may be no more about it, and you have a reason to be a little scared. No, it's uh, it's so uh, so far as they don't have fingers yet, uh, we, we shouldn't be scared. But like design-wise, probably, I mean, like you just uh, say that this uh, fabulous Kipsophila uh, looks like this, and it, it acts like this, and the uh, computer does the wedding design and uh, brings it out and uh, says how many stems of, of the product, uh, product the florist or like what, whoever does that thing will, will need, that kind of but, things. But Ati, uh, sorry, I did never met you and I'm happy to meet you by you this You have met me. Oh, but, you have met him. Oh, here we go, war. <laughs> where? In where? Moscow, long, 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 long time ago. In Moscow? Yes, long, long time oh, ago. Sorry, sorry Ati. So, but uh, I, I hope better than. Uh, uh, we always were somehow loose connected in the, in the web and I admired your uh, very bright spirit and your, your warm soul, what you expressed in your work. And uh, I think the, what, what is very, very important here is that how can the computer know when it is not programmed what pleases people yeah that is something what you know there should be always that uh factor age it means factor human should be involved but i tell you i'm interested i want to know what these guys will uh, offer us one day and maybe it offered opens uh, new dimensions for us in in design and and all that even in the quality of service and everything. So I'm not against it, no. I think actually, if you look at the growers industry, when you're looking at the growers, more and more is becoming mechanized, where it can, but there's certain things that can't be mechanized, 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 mechanized. So um, actually, I don't think I'll be on the planet that long, so that's okay. Um, but if you look at it, you know, when we argue about supermarket bouquets, the standardized bouquets and the florist, you still have that thing. The difference between a florist and a supermarket is your ability to use craftsmanship, is to use your own integrity and to interpret something for your customer. Gregor's right, you, to program a machine to say, well, my customer is da, da, da. Mm, Sometimes that won't pick up so well on a computer. Ah, you're in for... You're not getting out of it yet, Artie. You're still here, baby. Yeah, but but Alison, you don't know what Artie knows. Maybe he, oh. his friends, they are so far ahead in this that they just need only the fingers, the mechanized fingers to do it. So I have a lot of respect for this, what he says. Oh, no, listen, I am not mocking about it, Artie. He's one of the most intelligent people I happen to know. So, well, thanks for that, Mr. Artie, gorgeousness person with the jib sitting there. I have another question from Chris, Kristen. Where are you, darling? She wants to ask another question. Hey, Kristen, you have to unmute, darling. Unmute your button. 
You see, no, no, don't keep talking. Unmute your button. Do you see, that's it. Now talk. Oh. All right. Well, it's uh, Ati's question, I think. I just want to quickly address that from um, my perspective. I have a millennial son who is uh, on the lead team for Alexa uh, that is working with machine learning. So uh, machine learning is a real thing that happens every time you're on the computer and you look at something, perhaps you're looking to purchase something, you know, do you hear me? Uh, you'll see, yeah, you'll see it pop up on the side of your screen and our windows are getting smaller and smaller. Part of machine learning is what Ati is talking about with the uh, artificial. So I think it's closer than we realize. We're already seeing computer generated bouquets online. So um, I think it's a real and present thing that um, is, is more, uh, is sooner rather than later. Uh, is it a threat? I'm not so sure. I think if we work with it, but my concern and about the millennial question from earlier, I think, um, I think the uh, woman from Arizona with the plants and the cuts, and she loves cuts, and the, the pot of plants, I think, if we could uh, somehow in the flower chain from the breeders and the growers right down to the, the florist uh, brick and mortar, if we could somehow educate our consumer to the botany, to the chain, to the pricing structure at, at the um, auction houses, then we can influence our consumer base through the basic education. So just simple outreach from Zanger with posters to, uh, to the uh, distribution centers that the uh, florists can put on their shop windows or doors. I think if we have more of that education, the consumer um, uh, interface with the florist, with the nurseryman will be a, a lot faster. I think it'd be a much quicker. And I think the process uh, would go smoother with that education at the end of the chain. And there sometimes is a disconnect with the education from the beginning to the end. And um, that's what I was just curious to see what you think about that perspective regarding the education of the consumer. I can take that later yes. as a magazine editor. Or do you want to take it, Gregor? No. Okay. Um, as a it, magazine it, it, editor, um, our whole problem has been to get uh, Floral straight stroke, floral design taken seriously. And there's a pretty good reason for that. I sat on the board of an organization called PPA, which is a Pro professional publishers association. Now that stretches from everywhere from the Washington Post to Vogue, from Vogue to um, the big issue and so on. And then there's me. They had never taken someone from the floral industry onto something like that. And when I asked them why they said because I opened their eyes to it when I spoke to people in lifestyle magazines they all said the same thing and I'm sure if Carrie was, was sitting here beside me she would say the same thing that they are so used to employing stylists to go with the look you know the hope for the future was when the couturier industry took on board the fact of flowers and plants and put them into the couture lines and actually put in the setting. The obvious ones starting with Dior and going through Dolce Gabbana and so on and so forth. That opened a whole new window of opportunity. It was an opportunity that a lot of florists, I have to say, overlooked. In terms of your comments about uh, producing publicity literature to go up in florist shops, I am... Um, almost 100% against it, because I think the floral windows that they've got are their biggest marketing tool, and it should not be put up with posters, etc. It should be put up with their product and their designs. That's how to communicate. When you look at some of the most successful florists in the world that I've been fortunate enough to, to visit and call friends, always, if I look at their windows and I see something in there and I say, I would buy that. I would buy that. To get me to buy something, it's very difficult. But when you go into, for example, garden centers in the Netherlands, and there's one in particular, I can't walk past their, what Gregor would 
what we would say is um, impulse buys. That was the old term. Um, but the impulse buys were there because they were broken stems or whatever. The beauty of it was it was color graded. It was always done in beautiful synchronization. And it always meant you didn't buy one of those wee things. You bought a series of them, you know. I even came back with containers based on that. So with posters, no, I'm not for it. I think it's old and I think it's tacky. I think we have to move on in terms of... Uh, the lifestyle and to get it out to the general public there is progress being made but it's all about how it's communicated to the lifestyle media you can see a parallel image if you watch and this is going to sound bizarre but if you look at instagram and the like and look at the youngsters who are doing makeup and how they built up a whole huge following based on that nothing else but the makeup they're seeing are on these instant hits of doing these things. But then they come into the real world and find out just how difficult it is. It's the same thing. Based on that, the other thing is don't underestimate social media. When you're posting something on social media and when you're posting on Instagram and when you're posting on Facebook, Gregor and I have had long chats about this on the roof, is that it's not just the public you're looking to, and you shouldn't be aiming at other florists. You should be aiming at a potential marketplace. But the other people you should be aiming at are the researchers from those magazines and from television and from the film companies because they all watch it. And when you see some of these most successful people, it's because they've been picked up from what's been seen. We know that because of the competitions we run on Facebook because people have been getting business because the researchers watch our page, they see it, and then they approach the people direct and say, would you like to do something for us? To me, that makes all the hard work worthwhile. Quick answer. <laughs> do you want to answer that, Damien? No, no, thank, no, no. You okay. said it very clear. Okay, thank you. Um, Artie has a second no, question. No. Sorry, darling. Wait. I think uh, what is uh, very um, difficult for the profession is that uh, we are, with our consumption, come uh, out of a very deep, uh, I don't want to say traditional, but a deep old habit and a deep old thinking. And as soon when it comes too much to fashions fashions is one or two years in and one or two years out this is also something what for us is very hard to learn yeah. because of to to order a wreath or a heart for a funeral or order a bouquet for the next party to go this is always yes the same procedure like last year maybe we change the colors we change the flowers we change this but uh, I think that is for us. And when you mentioned this garden center in Holland, but there is always something new, but it is still following the path of a garden center, of, of a flower shop, which stays in there, yeah, what they expect from, from them, you know? And um, I think the, the fashion, the in and the out, is something very hard for the people who are distributing flowers. Agreed. Does it, does it make sense what I say? That absolutely, sense. There's a question coming in from Vincenzo. Vincenzo, come in. Hello. Oh, I Thank hear a voice. You. Thank you both for doing this. So I, I do have a question about uh, what you see the emerging thoughts in floral design uh, trends and color trends. Uh, I'm now primarily an event florist, not a retail florist anymore. Uh, that was a change we made since I saw you last, Gregor. Uh, but I, I just wonder where, what, what has COVID changed in, in what people might be looking for? Uh, since you, you two travel the world much more than I do, I thought I'd like to hear your thoughts. So uh, I was in, uh, for example, I was in Italy 
which is an unbelievable uh, event decoration country. And it's uh, in, in Europe, I would say, in uh, the uh, cases of decorations, uh, number one. Also France and uh, Greece and all these countries, they do a lot of weddings like that. I think, and I said this before, they will still be there and come back, yeah. but not in all countries. So, uh, and this has mostly uh, also, uh, as I said, a history, historical reason. What I believe is um, we go now through an extremely, extremely romantic phase so that the decorative floristry also with lots of flowers, with many flowers, has a good chance to exist. I'm a bit afraid when the big fashion uh, would come like you just need one or two or three flowers and you have a good um, education in form and line and, and figurations and all that. And you mainly don't need so many flowers anymore. I think at the moment we have, we play bad cards with the COVID and the post COVID phase. But I think that the longing for coming together again, mm -hmm. um, celebrating fests and events, and then still people are happy with good, good warm colors, uh, emotional colors and a volume an opulence. I think this plays in our cards very well. I see that not as negative. Since I was in Sardinia uh, six weeks ago, since I was in Verona, and what I hear from my Italian friends, uh, I cannot speak so well about America, but uh, even uh, my friends in Virginia, they have people waiting there for to uh, make uh, an event in a farm, in a, in a, in a rustic, uh, picturesque, rural place. And also I can imagine that the ideas where and how the celebration should be. But what I said last year, when all this was going under, oh my God, what shall the event people do? If you made it till now to survive, you will have work again. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not Jesus, but I feel that. I believe that too. I absolutely agree. David was saying that. Um, it is the boundary. Yeah. If you see all these, fam these family friends in, 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 the, in the middle of the United States, all the Illinoisans and Italians and all the Germans and all the old English and all them, that is their boundary. They need it. And if they don't think it is not nice enough in America, then they go to Naples and to Tavarola and to the uh, Mediterranean coast and they do their weddings there. The Italian florists uh, live only by their matrimonio. That's always the same. Why you didn't come to our last class? Oh, Gregorio, matrimonio, labore. I had so much work. You know how it is. And this is coming back. And I am not a wedding florist. I never really was a big wedding florist, but I believe in this, that this also for the gardeners, they should know because of the gardeners, they breeded bigger flowers. And it was the influence from the growing wedding business. How poor is today the Instagram going through and there is not all these opulent decorations. Yeah, if you see the date, yeah. 2017, yeah. 2019. And yeah. then it is not like done last week in uh, Pennsylvania. Mm. No, and it comes back, I believe it. And this is not pure economy, uh, it is emotion. It's a People need, need that. And I, I, I am seeing that, Gregor. I see exactly what you're saying here in Pennsylvania. Uh, people are you are, in Pennsylvania? <laughs> yes. P people are uh, loving getting back together. They they are looking for lush flowers. They they're looking for beauty. Yeah. Um, even even past weekend we did an all greenery wedding, and it was beautiful. But she wanted it lush. That is another thing. The green. Yes. Go on. 
right so, so all green the 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 bride did not the bride told me she doesn't like flowers but she loves greenery and yeah. so we, we had to work with all the lushness of of the different foliages to create her bouquet and everything um Sting. But I think that's what you're saying so that that confirms that confirms what what i have uh been fine. yeah Sting does a big, uh, did a big party in San Marino a few weeks ago, all in green. Mm -hmm. So, and we cannot predict this. This comes, it pops up, some big figures in the official life, some uh, um, famous people, they support it, and then here is a trend. Uh, but therefore, and this is really so important that we have a, a wide cultural and professional cultural foundation. Yeah. We cannot just learn this by a course of six weeks uh, and uh, even in the internet, we cannot. We have, to, we have to really have a good education. You, okay, I made uh, my life uh, very much, I was an educator and I, this, and I, have, to, I have to speak for that what I did. I have the longest time behind me. I cannot imagine that I teach another 10 years, but I believe in this and it helped many people. When I see all the people who worked here in this shop for these years, you see them and 90% of them still are in business, even after COVID. Yeah. So education. I start to become boring, Alison, don't you think so? No, I'll tell you when you're boring, you know that I'm quite capable of doing that. <laughs> okay, we have two questions from Facebook, please can I ask? One is, and this is an unusual one, how can we breeders support florists? That's, that's, a, that's a doozy of a question. How can we breeders support florists? That's a good one. Shall I go on to the next one? No, that's a good one. I know it's a good one. I, I think um, what, what I feel is that uh, not only by this uh, um, um, platform, Floral Fundamentals, I feel that uh, nursery and florists in some parts of the world come closer together. Yeah. The, the distribution and the mass distribution all over the places was very, very strong in, in these years. And it was less and more for many people, the only way. But I think the, the, the best help what the breeders can do is come up as much as possible with actual colors mm -hmm. of flowers, with actual forms. And even if you reach back to something what was big in the 60s, uh, I just mentioned a flower like Physostegia virginiana or Shelona oblica, you know, these were two flowers you don't see today anymore. Maybe in a perennial garden, on the, then the kids, they say, what is this? Yeah, this is a Shelona. Shelona, I never hear that. It's a, a little um, uh, perennial and all that. I think the innovation, and pushing the florist to innovation by also sometimes not risking a huge culture in investment in a, in, in a year, but always teasing with you florist, you are the one close to the customer. You need to seduce people for something new. Without new in these days, and the half of my life was, I was driven by the fact you have to do something new. Where is the new? Where is something new? Yeah. Listen to the news and all that. I think we should really uh, push as growers, the florists for innovation. That is one of the ways, but there are many more. There's one more question. And then as uh, this was due to be a one hour meeting and we seem to be heading to a two hour meeting, um, which I hope everyone's enjoying. Anyway, we all still here, which is a good sign. Um, Alison, darling. my wife was buying already an ice cream. Because she was expecting me back and she was filling the time with eating an ice cream. You know how often she eats an ice cream? Not very often. Not very often. 
Um, and she's eating your ice cream even more. No, I can't eat ice cream. You know that. I know that. Here we go. Second question is, how can growers support florists? How can growers know real florist needs and trends in order to be a better supplier? One word, communication. On you go, Gregor. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I think the communication between uh, wholesalers like our uh, boys and, and girls in Cologne, we complained for years that they were never interested how our businesses work. You never saw them. And, and when we started the big uh, advance uh, and Christmas presentations, up to 4,000 people who visited our garden here. Then the first people were coming and were interested. What are they doing there that so many people, so many people also florists were coming? I think it is very important that amongst the green professions that we show interest in each other. I want to know always what kind of flower is new what is this vine? What is this new anthurium? I think we never had easy chances to share that, like today with the web, with the internet. But we also should stick together with the ones we get the flowers from. We should stick together with the ones who the flowers sells for us to the public. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Well, is it not in Scotland? Yes, is what no, I know it's unusual and it's not raining. Don't don't start. Okay, so here we go. Gregor, thank you, old friend. Uh, thank you to everyone for coming along. If you want to ask any more questions, if you want further information, please go on to Danzinger Live, post it there, and we'll get the answers to you. Um, we have uh, as Betty mentioned earlier, we have um, Dancing Girl Live, by the way, is on Facebook. I don't think I said that, but uh, what Betty mentioned earlier is that on the Fusion Flowers magazine page, we're running another competition, this time focused on the Pidium uh, Green Dragon, hence the green discussion here. Uh, we'd like to see more entries. We'd like to see new people because the prizes that are going to happen have not been announced. They'll be announced at the end of the year. And there are some people in for one very, very big, delightful surprise. If we can get air flights to work again. Mr. Lush, it's been a joy. It always is. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Here we go. Artie still has a question. Artie, I've been told to wind up. You're going to get me fired. Artie. Okay. But I have a quick question. Wait. About in, about invasive species because it's like you know there's a lot of solidago like sold in in the to the florist but like as my mother is fighting with them in the in in his area in South Estonia like it's really difficult for me to promote it or to use it in my shop because uh, like I know that my wa mother wants to get rid of it and there's like huge areas in Estonia affected by by solidago and uh, and there's uh, some other invasive species which are sold to the florist yeah. like how we should uh, react to, to this or like it's for me it's really difficult because of course they are not grown in Estonia the things but it's still like I'm popularizing them and people are planting them still in the garden and not knowing it it takes over to nature it, Solidago yes Oh, I... Huge areas in South Estonia, which like you know, covered all in yellow right now, and it's not native species here. Oh, it's it's always the case with the non-native species. Uh, Scotland have it with uh, Rhododendron ponticum. It's blooming everywhere, and it is definitely invasive. Um, and the other one is, come on, Alison, Renotria japonica. That's it. Yeah. Rhinotria japonica, the Japanese knotwood. Absolutely. Disastrous and, and still being sold. So, um, good question. Any ideas? Yeah. Hi, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
Okay. Uh, I, I love nearly all flowers. I know, and I know you like some of these species. Mm. But I don't like the solidago. No, I'm not. This, gonna... this wild solidago, not these uh, cultivated, these are wonderful things. But the, uh, the, the wilds, we have them also here. That is, um, but, at, and on the other hand side, you should never say you don't like something. Uh, if it comes in the right amount, and it crea is created in a specific shape or in a pattern, overall pattern in masses, it can be fantastic. So I, I, I feel a little uh, difficulty to say that, but if you really can uh, cut it in big amounts and distribute it and give it to the right people, you can even make something out of that. Also the Solidago, so that is... Uh, one of the few things I would think a long time about what can we do with it, you know? <laughs> my, my question was more like, you know, should I like me as Estonian who, where we are actually like, uh, you know, fighting with Solidago, should I actually use it in my shop? Like right now, no, I'm, I no. have banned, like no Solidago in our shop. We will never buy it and we will never sell it but to our customers. The question. No, don't do it. Uh, if the if the people are neg people the consumer feels negative about it, don't invite it in to your environment. Don't do it. Okay. Uh, I think the whole flower business is about positive, positive, yes. positive. Okay. If you are a, a florist and you get a theme, what you should work in an exam or in an exhibition, uh, um, the undergoing something. Sea level is going up, what will it be like? And you have this as a theme, it's negative. We have to actually always turn something into positive. And when your Estonian people, when they think about that yellow flood, I would not, when they feel, don't feel good about it, don't invite it, no. One funny thing I want to tell you that uh, Claire Bryant says, thank you, everyone. I've been a bit distracted as my brother has just announced he got married today without telling anyone. And she's distraught at the bouquet. She's just seen it. I think she's saying it's not up to her standard. So that's a bit of a downer there. Maybe better to have been with us, Claire, than to have seen that. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you to Danzinger. Remember, sign on Danzinger Live. You can still stay in touch. Uh, the next time we are together, we will be with a, a very nice lady called Hanneke Frankema, coming in from the Netherlands, an exquisite designer who has a very big love of a thing called wire. <laughs> so thanks very much. And here's Betty the Gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you Hi. both, Gregor and Alison. You were great. Uh, I see that people are keep uh, asking questions. You are invited, of course, to pop question on the Dancing Girl Live, and we'll do our best to give you any, any answer that you want. And thank you for joining us. Uh, and we look forward to see you next time as well. Yeah. Thank you, Betty. Good Bye to now. see you. Thank Keep you. Keep watching over the end of September.